It's a pleasure for me to be here with you today, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here uh, via Skype. Uh, I love Loyola. I went to St. Bonaventure University, which is also Catholic, and our sports mascot is also the Wolf. Um, and of course, I love New Orleans as well. And Loyola has one, in my opinion, has one of the best undergraduate economics departments uh, in the country. So it's, it really is great to be here uh, with you tonight. Uh, on this topic, which I think is very, very important because uh, as all indications uh, are that marijuana is going to be increasingly legalized around the country for both medical and recreational uses. And this is a pattern that's existing not just in the United States, but it's also emerging around the world. So we need information about this topic in, in terms of dealing with it because uh, demographically and politically, uh, we're moving in this direction, and my point of view is that that's a good thing. The issue of the origin of marijuana prohibition is an interesting one because it's sort of dark and mysterious. It was previously uh, mentioned about the movie Reefer Madness, but that was a movie, a propaganda movie, that was made by the government itself. There was no actual significant social uproar um, about marijuana in the United States in 1937 when marijuana was effectively prohibited by a tax. They, they enacted the Marijuana Tax Act. Um, and when they had her hearings before Congress, um, there was no really negative um, statements made except by the government itself. And actually at that time, the American Medical Association spoke out against uh, the Marijuana Tax Act and, and, and Prohibition uh, because it was a legitimate medical, um, you know, resource that uh, doctors used and that veterinarians used in particular uh, in their practices on a regular basis. My father was a pharmacist and he had antique glass jars that said Cannabis Sativa and Cannabis Indica, which are two of the main forms of marijuana. So it was very a very legitimate um, useful product. And that's where I'd like to start my presentation with the distinction between the sort of legitimate uses and the illegitimate uses, where the legitimate uses um, are to both uh, marijuana and hemp. Both products are cannabis products, and both were effectively illegal uh, by the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937. Uh, prior to this, uh, hemp and marijuana were a very important resource um, in the economy. Uh, Columbus used um, hemp-produced sails and ropes in order to get from the old world to the new world. Um, Thomas Jefferson drafted the Declaration of Independence on paper that was made from hemp. Uh, and so this was a very important product. Humans have been using it for over 5,000 years for a variety of purposes. And I'll list out some of those. Uh, uh, hemp and marijuana can be used for, uh, you know, things like sales and ropes of all sorts. Um, it can be used as food, protein powder. Uh, it can be used as fuel. It can be used as biodegradable plastics. Um, and so it has a whole lot of commercial purposes that it can be used for. There are a lot of medical uses for marijuana and hemp, um, and studies have been just released within the last couple of years which indicate the strong possibility that, uh, of course, marijuana is used for glaucoma, pain relief, anxiety, um, uh, eating disorders, all sorts of uh, medical uh, uses in, in hemp, uh, in the, the, the cannabinoid CBD, uh, the evidence indicates the possibility that it can be used to shrink and eliminate brain tumors in children, and it reduces or eliminates uh, epileptic seizures in children, um, and, and also eliminates a couple of different types of leukemia cancer in the blood. And the research is really just starting here, uh, and most of the government research money, of course, has been for years used to try to um, determine negative consequences for marijuana consumption, and almost none have been looking at the possible benefits of medical marijuana, which are significant both for the THC version and the CBD version. 
And so there's a whole host of legitimate uses that would be very beneficial for the economy. Most of my research, however, has been directed towards the illegitimate or recreational uses of marijuana. And basically, of course, uh, we, we know full well that uh, there's a lot of people who are smoking pot in various forms out there. And one of the things that I've been able to show with my research is really the exact opposite of this notion that you start with marijuana and you use it as a gateway drug to more powerful and more potent, more dangerous and addictive drugs uh, up to heroin. And what I've shown is that the more the government uh, enforces prohibition, the more resources they allocate in terms of law enforcement, the military and so forth, the, the greater the penalties, uh, the greater the fines, uh, all of that encourages the smugglers to bring in the easily concealed, more potent versions of drugs. And so what it started out in the 1960s and 70s is that marijuana became much, much more potent. And between the early 70s and the early 80s, the potency of marijuana during that phase of the war on drugs went from uh, one half of 1% to 5%, and of course now it's much, even much more potent uh, because smugglers and dealers are encouraged to condense these drugs into the smallest possible package. And when marijuana, when it was difficult to condense marijuana into a smaller package, smugglers from South America and Mexico switched to things like cocaine, and then crack, and then heroin, and, uh, and then, of course, in more recent years, crystal meth, which is produced locally, so you avoid, you know, the Coast Guard and the Border Guards and all that. You only have to avoid the local sheriff and police. Um, and then, of course, now, uh, drugs are coming in from around the world that are made chemically, where they uh, tweak the molecules that the other people were talking about, the other speakers, um, and they essentially you know, avoid detection that way. And when people who use those new synthetic drugs show up in the emergency room, there's no effective test to determine uh, what they've taken and how strong of a dose they've taken. And so the war on drugs has actually made drug use uh, much, much more dangerous, more potent, more dangerous, more addictive. And we've seen the number of emergency room visits and overdose deaths uh, escalate and then bump over into the legal prescription drugs where Oxycontin and Vicodin are now killing more people than heroin and cocaine. So this whole notion that war on drugs is going to make us healthier is just completely wrong. Uh, the whole idea that the war on drugs is going to make us safer by eliminating crime is just ridiculous because what we've seen is these drug dealers these cocaine cartels, the street gangs that distribute uh, drugs at the consumer level are all one of the most major sorts of violence in society. And, you know, it's not that we haven't tried drug prohibition or that we haven't, you know, di taken different uh, approaches to uh, the war on drugs, but that we haven't arrested enough people or confiscated enough drugs. Um, the police and law enforcement have been incredibly successful in, um, in, in catching people, uh, of confiscating drugs, uh, of doing all that. But that's the problem, is that the more they do that, the more the dealers and smugglers have to turn to increasingly concentrated, dangerous uh, forms of drugs. And, you know, the outcome of their success of arresting people is that they're destroying lives in the process. They're separating families, they're putting breadwinners in jail, uh, they're breaking up families. Uh, you know, when you get arrested for possession, you may end up in jail, you may end up in prison, but even if you don't, you've got a record, and you're going to have a hard time getting a job. You're going to get, uh, you're not going to be able to get student loans, and so it's very disruptive. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people uh, every year that get arrested for, uh, you know, the possession of marijuana. And uh, this is all very much to the negative. Not only does it take people out of the workforce and take people out of the family, uh, but it also ends up saddling the, uh, 
the taxpayer with a huge bill to support those people in prison. Uh, and, you know, in the process, this war on drugs has been a major detriment to our civil liabilities. No, 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 you, have, you have one more minute. Okay, okay, great. The, government, the uh, government's military is not supposed to be involved in police actions, but they are. Uh, the government is not really supposed to be able to search uh, uh, with people uh, without a valid warrant, but they do. Uh, there's a whole host of legal li liabilities that the drug war has foisted upon. Uh, so not only are we less wealthy, less safe, and less healthy, but we're less American as a result. Thank you very much.